We got Kenneth Cross back here on the program. He's going to be fighting for the vacant 165 pound championship for lights out championship. He's going to be taking on Corey Coop uh, on February 16th. Uh, Kenneth, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm feeling wonderful, man. I'm just uh, getting mentally prepared now. It's uh, coming down to the last two weeks. So with weight cut and everything, I just got to keep my mind and my body sharp and, uh, you know, stay positive and look forward to putting on the best performance I can do February 16th. Yeah, and I, I mentioned it off the top there, this is for the 165-pound belt. Uh, whose idea was this? How did this come together with you fighting at 165? Well, uh, when I fought at 155, it's, it started to be, you know, a decent 30-pound cut. So it, I def, when I heard 165 was available and when I saw that the UFC was even kind of, you know, throwing it out there with the whole Diaz and uh, Poirier, I was like, man, this is my, you know, this is my weight class. This is where I should be. Um, my last fight at 55, the cut, like, drained me the whole, I fought for three minutes, and I just didn't feel like myself. So when this opportunity uh, presented itself, I jumped on board real quick. Yeah, I think it's a great idea because I think we are going to see that weight class in there, especially with the UFC. It sounds like they're getting rid of the flyweight division. So uh, yeah, I think, yep. think you're, you're starting a trend here, which is uh, which is good. Um, you mentioned the, the tough cut in your last fight. I mean, you, you got a really good win there. You got that first round finish over uh, Aaron Smith at Total Warrior Combat in December. Uh, you know, could that fight have gone any better? You don't get paid by the hour. Yeah, no, people, he had over 70 fights as an amateur and he uh, he's what they say, a gamer. So they expected him to drag me into deep waters and possibly even beat me. But uh, everybody everybody thought I was going to go the full 15. I manifest three minutes in my head before the fight. I knew I was going to beat him in the first round. And in my head, I was saying I was going to win in three minutes. I beat him in three minutes in like five seconds or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. So you probably bought a lottery ticket after that, right? If these predictions <laughs> no, no I don't well, gamble. Right? I don't even gamble. I lose money every time I try to gamble. Yeah. I, I don't but, play the lottery uh, either, but I just felt, cause you know, you, you predicted one thing, right? Maybe you could get some other stuff, uh, you know, going to work, work that luck a little bit. I think it starts and ends. I think it starts and ends with MMA. That's yeah. about it. Okay. But yeah. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that all day. Let's talk about your opponent here. Six and three record. How do you feel like you match up against him? Um, I think I'm going to run through him. Like, I think I'm going to run through everybody. He's just another body. You know, I, I train for myself. I train to, uh, to beat everybody. So I implement a little bit of uh, game strategy wise because of his height, because of his jujitsu, you know, so I work around that. I work towards my strengths. I think I'm a lot stronger. I think I'm a lot faster. I'm a lot younger. Um, he doesn't like to get hit. I like to hit people. So I feel like I have the advantage anywhere the game takes place. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hit him with a flying knee because I can jump. I can jump high as shit anyway. So he just got KO'd with a flying knee too. But uh, yeah, I think I match up well. I don't see him beating me in any aspects of the whole fight game. And uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long night for him. It's gonna be a short night for me. And I'm gonna have that strap walking into uh, bottle service after the fight. So there you go. You got it all mapped out. Uh, priorities. I like that. I'm ready. This will be this will be a first round finish too. Let's go with that. I like that. So there you go. I don't have to answer that. Uh, last question. Um, but uh, as far as uh, you know, the people around you, who who's helping you get ready for this fight? Well, uh, definitely everybody at Michigan Top Team. All my coaches: Darren Krukshank, Jason Fisher, uh, Javier, um, Cody Stammen. We're going. We're putting in extra hours. I got a lot of guys that are are good at. Uh, mimicking karate and using using those kind of karate moves and they actually they move a lot a lot more swift than he does you know he's he's slow so I got these guys that are doing what he does better than he does it so I, I know what I'm looking for I have uh, Taras this guy is uh, I forget where he's from but he he can barely even speak English and he's like 6'2 he says I say he's at least 6'3 and uh, he's one of the toughest guys in the gym. So I have him, Bobby Nash, who's like 6'1". I'd say he's 6'2". I have him, Bobby Nash, and then Jason Fisher, I'd say, are my uh, leading, strongest uh, sparring partners. And you go five minutes with each of them, adding up to, you know, 50. This is a 25-minute fight. But uh, you go 15 minutes with these guys, and you're, you're not feeling too well afterwards. Like, these guys are pushing the pace. And I don't go to practice to take it easy. I go to practice. I have an appetite for – the strongest people seven days a week. I want to get pushed to my limits. I want those RPMs maxed up. So when I go to a fight, I'm ready. I'm prepared for a war. And uh, if it goes the distance, you know, I'm ready for it. So uh, yeah, back to the question. Everybody at my gym, all my coaches, Kara Rowe, working on boxing. Everybody just gives me positive vibes. 
And uh, they look forward to me whooping ass because that's just what I do. How's the cut going? Must be nice not to have to focus on those extra 10 pounds. Yeah, so that's exactly right. It's not, I'm, I'm 11 pounds overweight right now. And I just started like intermittent fasting. Like this is going to be the week where I kind of just like eat a couple, like two meals a day. I'll probably do it wrong, but I'm going to tell you right, right now, at the end of the day, I'm going to have so much fucking energy. And this dude's cutting down from like 200, 210 pounds to 165, whatever. I've heard he was that big, whether he is or not. Let's see if he makes way. I'll take, you know, 20%. And uh, I'm going to beat, I'm going to beat the shit out of someone that's uh, just already fatigued before he even steps in that cage. Anytime you fight for a title on, on the regional scene, it always looks good on the resume. Uh, is the plan after this contender series or UFC? I mean, I mean, you know, you get this win here at seven and two. That's going to be a nice record. Yeah, I have options, unlimited options, right? Um, there's a Zach Shaw versus uh, Rice Brink fight that's going on. They're fighting for a strap. I could take that one. I could drop down to 55 with, uh, you know, the right, the right nutrition plan. I cut down to 55 again and uh, take another belt for lights out. I could be champ champ. You know, I guarantee Bellator is going to hear about it. I guarantee, you know, uh, Sean Shelby and people are going to hear about it because I hang out with Cody Stammen. I train with, you know, the best, the people that have connections. And I'm climbing through the ranks real quick. I'm blowing people up. I have every, every fight to finish. I don't, you know, I don't wait around. I'm exciting. I look great. I talk all right. I'm getting better at everything. So uh, the options are really limitless. I might go fight out of state. You know, I got people that, people that want me to travel and fight, get eyes, get exposure. I'll go wherever the money is, honestly. And, uh, I'm just waiting for that call. I'm going to keep taking people out until, uh, you know, I get that chance. And then, and then I'm never looking back. And we're looking forward to it, man. This is a stack card. Uh, Lights Out Championship 2 coming up here February 16th. Uh, Kenneth, it's always good uh, catching up with you, man. I appreciate the time as always. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. All right, you guys. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Cross the Boss MMA. Uh, Facebook, Kenneth Cross. And then uh, let's go shout out to uh, Klusterman Sports Tab, Sean McHugh and his whole family. Oh, my God. We got some tree companies I forget the names of. Let's see here. We got – what's that? Praise by Casey. Oh, Praise by Casey. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of sponsors, honestly, but uh, I can't think of all of them off the top of my head. Um, you know, I just want to – I want to thank everybody for giving me support, everyone for believing in me. I'm just focused on training. I'm focused on getting this belt, bringing it back to MTT, hanging it up. And uh, moving on to the next, the next big fight, I, I'm only excited by championship fights. I'm only excited by numbers. And uh, I'm going to keep improving each and every day. And I'm going to leave the crowd with a smile on their face. So come on out to Grand Rapids at the Delta Plex, February 16th. Watch me put Corey Cuppy to sleep. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time out. Uh, it's been too long. I miss your face. And, and I can't wait for our next interview.